All right, in this video, we're going to talk about how to solve linear equations. So let's start by looking at a linear equation. 4x plus 3y equals 11. It looks a lot like an expression. The big difference, though, is that the equal sign there makes this thing an equation. And typically, when you see a linear equation or equation of any kind, the goal is going to be to solve for the variable. In this case, the variable is x. So our goal is solve for x. Now to achieve this ultimate goal of ours, what we have to do is realize that if we do something to one side of an equation, we can do that same thing to the other side of the equation, and that equation will still be true. So just as an example, we're allowed to add 1 to the left side of the equation as long as we add 1 to the right side of the equation. I'm not sure why we would do this, but if we did, we would combine like terms on the left-hand side to get 4x plus 3 and 1 give you Four, and we would get 11 plus 1 is 12 on the right-hand side. And it's important to realize that the equation 4x plus 3 equals 11 is the same exact equation as 4x plus 4 equals 12. Now I'm going to erase this, but I want to say that similarly, we could, if we wanted to, decide that we didn't want to add 1 to both sides, but we wanted to subtract 11 from both sides. What would we get if we did that? Well, on the left side of the equation, we have 4x plus 3 minus 11. The plus 3 and the minus 11 combine to give minus 8. And on the right side of the equation, 11 minus 11 would just give you 0. Again, the equation 4x plus 3 equals 11 and the equation 4x minus 8 equals 0 are the same. Now, this was fun and everything, but the ultimate goal, remember, was to solve for x. That means you want to get something that says x equals a number. And I'm not sure that subtracting 11 from both sides is really helping us in that ultimate goal. So I'm going to erase this one more time, and we're going to think about what can we do to ultimately get the x by itself. Well, unfortunately, I don't think we can do it all in one step. but we could get the 4x term by itself. Since 3 is being added to 4x, you could subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, and you'd be left with the left-hand side, 4x plus 3 minus 3, is just going to be 4x, and 11 minus 3 is just going to be 8. So this is really good. We're halfway to our ultimate goal of solving for x, or getting x all by itself. The problem now is that x is being multiplied by 4. How could we get x all by itself on the left-hand side of the equation? Well, if x is being multiplied by 4, you can just divide by 4 on the left side of the equation. If you did that, the 4 divided by 4 would just cancel to 1, and you would just have x on the left side, which is great. However, the first rule is if you do something to the left side of an equation, you have to do it to the right side of the equation. So we have to divide by 4 on the right side as well. And if we do that, like I said, we'll just get an x on the left, and 8 divided by 4 is just 2 on the right side of the equation. So now we've solved for x, and x is 2. Now it's always a good idea to check your solution to make sure it's right. We got x equals 2, so we want to check to make sure our very first equation that we started with is true if we plug in x equals 2. So I'm going to copy down this equation here. It's 4 times x plus 3 equals 11. Now we decided that x equals 2, so let's replace our x with a 2 and see, is this equation true? You have 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3 equals 11. Yeah, 8 plus 3 does equal 11, so that is true. Now we verified that the solution x equals 2 is correct for this equation. Now that we've solved our first equation, I want to explain to you why these are called linear equations. An equation is linear if the power on the variable is 1. In this case, we just have x as our variable, and that x is raised to the first power. It's there even though you don't write it. So that makes this equation linear. Now if we want to get even more technical, about this. This is a linear equation in one variable. It's a linear equation in one variable, obviously, because there is only one variable in this problem. You don't have, say, an x and a y. Okay, let's solve another one just like it. We want to solve the equation 2x minus 9 equals 1. And when we say solve, of course, we mean solve for x. So again, we can't do this all in one step, but we can get the 2x term all by itself. Since there's a 9 subtracted from the 2x, what we want to do is we want to add 9 to both sides of the equation. And you'll see what happens. You get 2x minus 9 plus 9 is just 2x on the left side. On the right side, we end up with 10. Now again, we have that pesky number multiplying our x, but we know how to deal with it. In this case, we can just divide by 2. Of course, if we do that on the left, we have to do it on the right as well. The 2x divided by 2 just gives us 1x or just x. And 10 divided by 2 gives us 5. In the interest of saving time on this video, there's your check for you. Now as is typical in mathematics, these problems are going to get a little bit harder. Let's take a look at this one. We have 2x plus 5 equals 5x minus 1. 
Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get all of the terms that contain x on one side of the equation. We're going to get all of the terms that don't contain an x on the other side of the equation. One thing at a time. How can we get all of the terms that contain an x on one side of the equation? Well, one way to do this would be to look at this equation and say, well, we're going to subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. The reason I picked 2x is because now 2x minus 2x combined, those are like terms to 0. And we're just left with a 5 on the left side. On the right side, 5x minus 2x combined to give 3x. And this minus 1 is not a like term with the others, so we just kind of have to carry it down. So now we got all of the terms that have an x on one side of the equation right here. Now we want to get all the terms that don't have an x in them to the other side of the equation. And at this point, this problem is very similar to the previous problems that we've done. There's this 1 subtracted from the 3x, so we're going to add 1. If we do that, 5 plus 1 gives us 6. 3x minus 1 plus 1 just leaves us with 3x. Now again, we have a number multiplying the x that we want to get by itself. We know to take care of that, you have to divide by that number. So we're getting x equals 2. Now if you want to check that, you should plug your x equals 2 back into the very first equation to see if it works. Now that we've done a few of these, let's write down some steps that we can use to solve every one of these linear equations. We'll call step 1 a surprise step for later, because we haven't had an example that requires it just yet. But one step that we've always done is we've gotten all of the terms with the variable on one side of the equation and all other terms on the other side of the equation. Next, what we had to do is isolate the variable by dividing through by the number in front of that variable. That gives us the answer that we want. Of course, we always want to check. Now there's only one more thing that we can do to complicate your life with these linear equations, and that's give you an equation that has parentheses in it. If you see parentheses in one of these linear equations, what you want to do is you want to get rid of those parentheses first. Now why don't I erase this one here and give you an example where we have to do all four steps. Okay, there's a linear equation. So let's go through our steps. We want to get rid of parentheses first. That means distribute. If we distribute the 2 through the parentheses, we get 2x minus 2 times 1 is 2. Now we need to get all the terms with the variable on one side of the equation and all the terms on the other side of the equation. So I'd like to move this 2x to this side of the equation. That requires subtracting 2x from both sides. If we do that, 2x minus 2x gives you 0 and you're left with negative 2. On the right side of the equation, 4x minus 2x gives you 2x, and then the 4 carries down. Now we need to get all other terms on the other side of the equation, so that means we have to take this 4 and move it to the left side of the equation. The way to do that is subtract 4. Now on the left side of the equation, we have negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. On the right side, we have 2x. Step 3, isolate the variable by dividing. In this example, it means we have to divide by 2, since there's a 2 multiplying the x. If we do that, we get x is negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. That is our answer, and you should always check your answer. And in the interest of time, I'll let you check my check to make sure that uh, I checked my answer correctly. But it should work out. Now so this video doesn't get too long, let's stop it there and get you a quiz. Here it is. I would like you to solve the equation 2x plus 9 equals 5x minus 3. Alright, great. Good luck.